over at the other house, so I ain't no telling where it's at now. Mm. Wow. Yeah, the print's tiny. I mean, you know. That ain't tiny. That's 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 terrible. Mm. I should I should have saved my money. Mm. Yeah, well, you know. I didn't look at it. I just I just made an assumption it's, that yeah, it would be a. It's a yeah, but I yeah, well, but I, well, I think yeah, I think you saw you you <laughs> that that the capitalization made that the operative yeah, word. I as thought, opposed yeah, to, yeah, I thought the print might be like the white letters, mm -hmm. and that's my fault. I didn't look in it because if I'd ever done that, I never done. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's microscopic. Like, I mean, come on now. Yeah, that's like even 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 forty years ago, I've been fussing about this. I mean, as for average sight, that's still yeah, you got yeah that's ridiculous. Yeah, you you got still squint, yeah. you still got the squint. You you had to put that up under some kind of magnification. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, have a, you know, still got you a, a strong. Yeah. You know, it's like it helps because yeah, I was looking up the word uh, energy, like the the original like um um. Greek, you know, mm -hmm. the whole energy thing. And I was getting hype all off of that because, you know, you talk with people of various uh, belief systems and everybody talking about energy. I saw a thing on, I saw a thing on, uh, on Facebook and I heard Eddie Griffin, the comedian, say this. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was like, right now you matter, but he was like, once you start moving at light speed, you energy. And I mean, it sounds hip, mm -hmm. but it's like, how do we do that? Like, how do we do it? It's a great idea, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to, to ponder. But, you know what I'm saying, it's like everybody, everybody's walking around with, like, atomic energy in their body. But it's like, you ain't got, you don't know how to utilize it. Mm -hmm. And so I remember whenever we were talking about the, um, was it the different powers or something, I remember that passage in Ephesians, like, looking that up. I remember seeing energy, and I was just like, interesting, energy, da, da, da. in this context, I just kind of left it alone. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, like I said, you be talking with people, you know what I mean, different belief systems, and they talk about energy, and the Lord just bought it back. He was like, yeah, he was like, stop being afraid of the word energy, like, look it up in its original context. And so I've been dealing with that lately, and okay. that's been really blessing. Well, that's interesting. Well, see, that makes me think about David Herzog, because he's always talking about how he's meeting people in the occult and mm -hmm. how they'll use certain terminology. Right. And, you know, he, he'll he go with it, you know. Exactly. And, you yeah. know, like they say, wow, you know, uh, what, what 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 kind of power source are you drawing from? Mm -hmm. And he'll say the highest, the highest, the highest, highest power yeah, source, exactly. which is really true. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, so it's a way to um, get to them without all this, Christianese in a sense. Yeah, because they wouldn't know what it is anyway. Yeah, yeah, so you have to like, yeah, you have to like acclimate them to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because what they'll say is, man, I don't know what's going on. I, I, yeah, that, right, I know, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what happens. Because they're, they're, they're not used to it, mm -hmm. but they know something, something's different. Mm -hmm. But they don't know how to quite put it. And if they haven't had uh, a experience where they've been in the church and the power of God's been present, mm -hmm. they don't know what it is. You know, that's why I say a lot of times you people make the mistake of thinking they know somebody's background just because they're sitting around getting high with them. But you don't know what they did as a child mm -hmm. or a teenager. You know, we were talking about this uh, whenever we stopped at the uh, the home of Lamar's house. It's a young lady uh, that works at a coffee shop we both frequent, and he was talking to her. She, you now granted, when you look at her, she's got tattoos the whole nine yards, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. She's talking to Jason about miracle signs and wonders. Yeah, because you just never know a person's background. Yeah. And, and you know, um, it's, you just never know. T and that's why, that's why, although people, you can't say people suck because of, because of mm -hmm. sin, but at the same time, but, yeah. yeah, the people, people to me are interesting that you and you engage them and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Then you find out sometimes that you got something in common with them that you would never know until until you got to a conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can get surprised at times because people don't know sometimes about how they talk about these kind of things with other people because people think they're weird right. or think they're crazy, right. and because of it. Even when we talk to other Christians, we lose them. Mm -hmm. 
especially the ones who consider themselves so spiritual, or super spiritual, I should say. And in many cases, they're at a, they're at a child's level and they don't even know it. Mm. And they think they're super spiritual and they make the mistake that because you don't act like them, mm -hmm. that you ain't here. I mean, I think about how a lot of people just make that mistake in the world that they will <clears throat> think that because you don't act like them, that you ain't here. And they don't realize that your background is different. Mm -hmm. And because your background is different, your whole outlook and view can be entirely different. Because so, so many people are so busy thinking they're the norm. Right. Yeah, it's a narcissism that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. They're the vanguard of how stuff's supposed to go, and it's like, yeah, who told you that? Ain't that important? Yeah, right? you know, yeah, you tell people, no, that ain't really how it is, mm -hmm. you know. And and so, um, when people, when you had to say something, people can go like, well, wait a minute, why do you think that way? Don't you realize people have a different background? If they have a different background, then they're going to view things <laughs> differently <clears throat> and come at it from an angle that maybe you never even thought about. Right, and that's and I think that that's the whole purpose of. Uh, when you talk about like what's interesting about you know interacting with people, that is like that is what's cool about dealing with people is that whenever they do have a different perspective that's that's positive, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like it's like wait a second, I appreciate that because I can put that into work and I can get to I can get to an I didn't know that there was a different method to get to the same result. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there was a different way to think about that. It's like, once again, now that's outside of Christ. It's mm -hmm. like, there's only one way to think about God and all of that. But, but yeah, I, I agree. It's like, yeah, it's like one, one culture, you know, like that's, I mean, that's what the problem is. Uh, that's what the problem is with the world whenever we talk about white supremacy. Like, mm -hmm. that's where they're coming from. They want to try to act like their worldview is like the hegemonic worldview, like the definitive way to look at everything. And it's like, well, first off, how is it even possible that we should look at everything the way that you guys think about whenever you're piggybacking off of all the achievements that everybody else has done before you all that you've done is taking those ideas and because you were on the sidelines you might have been able to modify them but you haven't really created any it's, yeah you know no original ideas yeah. not your original ideas yeah yeah great culture coming from egypt and yet, but people don't realize that the Egyptians got this stuff from the fallen angel. So, yeah, so, right. so you know, that's the whole thing about it is that so many things have been left out of Christianity. That um, I remind people, we have what we have is a, is a Westernized version of it, and it's mm -hmm. not the original version. And we have to revert, we get back to the original version, and that that astounds people. Even Jason said it just really flipped his worldview when I said Christianity is not a Western religion, it's Middle Eastern. And when I told him that, he, I mean, his eyes brightened. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the, you could you could see the, the wheels turning in his head, you know. So um, it's, 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 our, it's, it's all a matter of perceptive and it, it, perception. And um, that's what we must understand. It's your perception or many times your lack of perception. Um, we're going to talk about it, certainly in the, in the realm of the spirit, as if we're always talking about. We're trying to get people to come to the conclusion that um, we need to pursue Christianity from, from its original intent uh, from the first century and its background prior to that, you know, uh, what we call the Old Testament. Uh, we, we were viewing our worship of Yahweh, Jehovah, Jehovah. Uh, the real God. See, I'm arrogant enough to say that, and I, and I know I'm not being arrogant in saying that. I, I'm not being smug. There's only, there's one supreme God. There are many gods in this world. There are many gods of this world, but there's only one supreme God. And in English, his name is Jehovah. That's why the Bible refers to him as the most high God. That's right. That's it's right. Like the Bible, mm -hmm. the Bible tells us that that they like what you said. There are gods with that they're plural gods, but there's only one most high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, and that's you're right. That's why the Bible says that. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people, I think, a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> many times we can't see the forest for the trees, mm -hmm. and that's why the Bible, like you said, that's why the Bible says that the most high God, and you you must understand it from that perspective. He is the most high God. I was sitting back, kind of laughing about it <clears throat> the other day. Um, and I was I was saying, I was in prayer uh, early one morning. I said, Lord, I said, you know, I said, you know, 
I tell people, you know, that I'm calling on this God who's invisible. But I'm looking forward to the times when he's going to make himself made manifest as he did in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I can't wait to look up in the sky and see those eyes peering through the clouds. You know, I, I can't I can't wait to see that. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm in anticipation of that to happen all over again. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the unction just draw, mm -hmm. get, draw, just draws them. Mm -hmm. And um, but in essence, what I really want to uh, uh, talk about tonight, a lot of times the Lord will speak to me about what to speak about because of something that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've seen on Facebook. And uh, uh, I certainly would like for you to pray about Eastern North Carolina, where I'm from, uh, my hometown, Tarboro, North Carolina, the neighborhood that I grew up in, uh, which is called East Tarboro. Uh, most of it is underwater. Um, I don't believe my house is underwater. I, and I have had no direct word, but <clears throat> it's kind of kind of going toward the house. It's kind of it kind of goes up on a rise. Uh, I was telling your mother uh, a while ago that uh, uh, the last time in in '99 that the water stopped two blocks behind the house. Mm -hmm. On Emerson, Emerson Avenue. I grew up, if you go on the straight line, I would say less than two miles from the river. Or the way that the, the water goes around the town, it goes around the, the side where <clears throat> most of the black people live, which is, we call it East Tarboro, that side of town. Um, and Prince was on the side of the River Bridge. And then you got downtown Tarboro. In, in 99, the water came up the, through most of uh, downtown to just about two blocks. Um, and um, it's, it's bad. It's, it's really bad. Um, so, you know, I prayed about uh, back home, you know, the other week. You know, the, the whole, the way the water's got to go down, downhill in two of the largest rivers uh, in the state are uh, the Tar River that runs, uh, you know, around my hometown and the Noose that runs on the other side of, of uh, Eastern North Carolina. In 99, they both met. In, in essence, that's what really happened. Um, the Lord gave me a dream concerning it. I just didn't understand it until it happened. Uh, we were making a trip uh, to Tarboro, and I was on the road between Tarboro and Rocky Mountain 64, US 64, and I was about maybe three miles outside of town, and I was driving, and uh, <clears throat> I happened to look up to my right. When I did, I saw three funnel clouds. Uh, I had a vision. And I remember telling my wife and kids, I said, oh, that wasn't good what I just saw. And they said, what did you see? I said, I saw three funnel clouds. Well, I didn't know what it was at the time, but the three funnel clouds I saw were three hurricanes. Uh, I didn't recognize what I had seen until after the three hurricanes hit. And the last one was Floyd, I believe, right? Uh, I think Floyd was the last one they hit. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I went to a family reunion when the second one hit. And... Um, the war was already standing. We started to stand outside the Rocky Mount and talk a, a bunch of us cousins. And water puddles started to form, and we said we got to go. And then the last one hit, and my my kids were in school then. You get yeah, they were in high school at Grimsley, and um, my I was working uh, at uh, Deluxe Check Printers, and I was working from five in the afternoon to one thirty in the morning. And so uh, my kids were getting ready to go to Grimsley, and my wife woke me up, and. Uh, she told me there was a reporter sitting on the Tar River Bridge and had on boots and water was beneath his feet. And I sat, I literally sat up, up right in the bed. And then when I saw it on TV, I just saw a wall of water behind Princeville and it just blew my mind. And that was, that was with three hurricanes. This hurricane by itself dumped all that water from here. But we got almost a foot of rain here. And they, certain, they got more than a foot of rain. Oh, they, they certainly were saturated with a tremendous amount of rain. That one hurricane did all this damage. So uh, please uh, pray uh, for uh, the people uh, in East North Carolina. And if possible, uh, there are some, uh, what, Gobi funds, whatever they call them, uh, that are uh, out for Edgecombe County, my, my home county, uh, for Princeville. Uh, one of the oldest black settlements. There's a little controversy whether it's the first one or not. Somebody says there's one uh, upstate somewhere in Illinois somewhere. Uh, I know Chicago was founded by black people, um, but um, but either way, you know they're going to need a lot of help for some time now. Um, 
But again, as I say a lot of times, I see some uh, some good things on, on Facebook uh, and social media. Um, and a lot of times God will lead me to talk about those things because uh, there are things that, that people are asking and they're, they're, they're making inquiries and people are talking about experiencing. And there, um, there was this young man that was, I guess he's on your, he's on your thread. He's one of your friends, isn't he? What's his name? Oh yeah, William? he is William Tyrone. And he uh, had a he had a he had a he had a vision or a dream, dream dream he had, and he was talking about that he uh, God was talking dealing with him about witches, and um, in essence, what he was talking about was he saw that uh, they were uh, conspiring. He saw that they were dressed in black, and he saw that they were going to specific places. In malls, but see, I, you know, God knows exactly what He's doing. But he's talking to people, and um, He was talking about how they were doing different things. Yet He talked about how uh, sometimes they're dressed in regular clothes. It makes sense; nobody would be dressed in black all the time. And um, it had started a, a, a discussion. Uh, although I checked earlier today, I didn't see any other activity. But I will check after we get through. And um, it was interesting because. Um, You put my name and Quint's name down, so I said, okay, I guess there's an opportunity you want me to give a testimony. So I did actually uh, uh, gave validity to, the, to what the young man had seen because in the year, a spring of 1980, uh, God gave me a dream, and I saw a couple of witches, and they were dressed in black. Um, I actually trained a guy one time that was that was dressed in black, and yeah, he had demon power all over him. He was my uh, co-worker that I trained on my job when I was co-leader. At the Lux Check Printers, um, I know that you had this thing called a golf thing, that uh, kids were dressing in black and 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 using the black lipstick and you know doing their eyes and all this other stuff. And it was a social phenomenon, but at the same time, there was an occult element to a great deal of it. Some of them got into it uh, at random, and some of them knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, not all kids were into the witchcraft, but some of them were. Uh, it was a way that people got drawn into the occult. Um, that you know, there were a bunch of golf kids over here at UNCG, and uh, I saw yeah, but some you know they just dressed that way because it was you know just a thing to do at the time. But you know, you can get to a lot of stuff sometimes mm -hmm. unknowingly until it's too late, then you get sucked in. But um, I saw a coven of witches. They were dressed in black. Uh, I remember I was having uh, see that see the other stuff God brings to your mind. I was having a conflict one time a few years back when I was um, I was uh, on my event committee on my job, uh, and uh, I was and put in charge of uh, putting together a, a situation where we would have people come to the theater, and uh, like early before the first show, you uh, know, at one of the local theaters. And the guy I had to deal with that guy was into witchcraft. He was dressed in black. And, and it was because our spirits didn't agree. He was the most un unagreeable person to deal with. Mm. I could call him and leave him a voicemail. He wouldn't call back. Uh, we had a hard time actually putting the thing together. It was like it was like at the last minute we finally got it put together because the guy really didn't like dealing with me. I knew what it was when I saw him. He was dressed in black. <clears throat> he was in the witchcraft. He's not no longer at that theater anymore. Um, I think after dealing with me, he decided to find another job, which has happened at other other times as well, different things. Um, so what I did was uh, on Facebook is that I actually uh, gave my testimony. I talked about how God gave me the dream in 1980, uh, and part of the dream was I saw a uh, covenant which they were dressed in black. I saw the Masonic symbol in the Catholic Church, and I woke up immediately, and I knew it was all interconnected, all three entities have got witchcraft in them. Um, then, to give validity to what the young man saw, he was he was dead on about the malls, because during the early early 1990s, when I was working at the U.S. Postal Service, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Lord showed me uh, you had a bunch of white kids. These are white people doing this stuff. They want to talk about us Africans, people of African descent working witchcraft. White people work witchcraft too. Every every culture, listen to me, every culture that did not serve Yahweh Jehovah were witchcraft. And I got news for you. Even the Hebrews were into it. 
Kabbalah is. That's what the Kabbalah. That's right. That's what Kabbalah is. It's, it's Hebrew or Jewish witchcraft. And Abraham, we could say that Abraham was the first Jew. And he, what was he prior to becoming a Jew? He was Chaldean. He was Chaldean. He was into all kinds of witchcraft. Chaldeans were known for witchcraft. Go, what you need to do is go back to the Old Testament. Look at all the different cultures and people that are there. Google them. See, y'all got it made. I just had to go to the library. You know, I had to go to the library and look this stuff up. You guys can use this. Right now, while you're watching me or listening to me, you can take your smart watch and Google. You can Google this stuff. and stuff will pop up. Always study the culture of the people mentioned in the Old Testament or the New Testament. That will help you understand some things better. You'll understand the pagan deities that the Bible does talk about, but it'll give you a more in-depth uh, fill in some gaps and get you to understand some things better. So, see, you got to do a little bit more research than just read the Bible. Yeah, you need to read the Bible, but you need to use that as your main source and then take other sources to help your understanding. That's what they do in Bible school. That's all they do. Anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, all they, that's all they do in the seminary. Mm. Garnett was saying how he keeps running into people who have gone to seminary. And I remember this is happening to me a lot as well. And they want to know what seminary you've been to. And mm -hmm. it's like, nah, dog, I just read the Bible mm -hmm. and then I go study. check. Yeah, I just study. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, there, I mean, yeah, you could deal with a formalized curriculum or you could just read the same books those people who are in the curriculum read. Exactly. Like, what really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff was listening to people who would go to Oral Roberts University. Yeah. So I, I, you know, just he, me listening to Bill Joe Darty mm -hmm. uh, in the eighties. Mm -hmm. He's the first person that I heard about some stuff. He started talking about well, well, or I was the first one to said talk about Maccabees, and then Bill Joe Darty he started talking about although he didn't always <laughs> reference it, but he was uh, talking about um, um, Jasher and uh, Jubilees. Mm -hmm. He would, you know, he would, he would say sometimes. There's a, sometimes he would say it this way. He said, "There's a book outside the Bible." How he would say it sometimes, mm -hmm. but because I had studied about Oral Roberts, I knew where he was going. Mm -hmm. You know, my own reading. So um, I know Garnett was telling me the same thing. Mm -hmm. He was talking about he's talking with this guy, and he said this guy has been to seminary, and he wonders how come how come Garnett knew all this stuff, and he hasn't been to seminary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you know, a lot of times. Uh, if you just do a little reading, you can learn a lot of stuff. You don't have to go to seminary. You know, you don't have to. Um, you need to but you need to do some study. So take time to do study. Now, where was I? Oh, I was talking about how um, um, the mall situation that young man wrote up. I want, make, I want people to know what he was seeing was, was valid. <clears throat> like I said, in the 1990s, God told me I needed to go to the mall. God showed me in a dream that there were white kids walking around like they did in Columbine with the long black coats and, and the black clothes on. But they didn't walk around with guns, but they were part of a covenant. And they walked around here in Greensboro at Four Seasons Mall, and they were deliberately working spells on every floor, on three floors. And God told me, I want you to go and bind that witchcraft and cleanse that mall. And at first, I wasn't too happy about it. I wasn't afraid to go do it. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Frankly, I was getting tired of going and doing these jobs where we got all these preachers here who want to be big shots, who are building kingdoms for themselves, but not really doing any real work. And I'm not being arrogant in saying that. I'm telling the truth. They were not really doing spiritual work to help the city, to help the region, but building a kingdom for themselves. And I said, God, why don't you send some of those other people to go do it who want to be such big shots? And God said, I can't send them. Why? Because they're not equipped to do the job. So I reluctantly tell God yes, and I go to the mall, and I walk all three floors, and I'm praying in the spirit. I'm praying in tongues, binding that witchcraft. And I can't tell you how long I didn't, you know, look at my watch to see how long it took me to do it. But I walked all three floors. I walked all three floors, the length of all three floors. And after I got through doing it, I don't know if it took me an hour or longer. But if I got through doing it, God cleansed it. 
And after it happened, they knew what happened. They didn't come back. Mm -hmm. See, there are times when you can rebuke the devil and they'll know, oh, wait a minute, somebody did something that has power. We better watch ourselves. They never came back to that mall. You hear me? They never came back to that mall to do that. Now, there have been individuals from different cultures that, that, are, that are serving their false gods, and they might bring demon power in there, but it's not a concerted effort mm -hmm. of some people to go in, because they, they call themselves going to spread that witchcraft all over Greensboro and this region. They thought they had a plan. They found out. Uh-uh. See, that's why I try to tell people. I had a young man ask me one time when I first got started in ministry, and I was living back home then, and he said, what can one man do? I said, God, and one is the majority. And I wasn't saying it to be funny. I just, that's what I believe. God, God, one man with God is a majority, but you got to be on point. You got to be on point. If you're on point, then it's, it's going to make a difference. See, people make mistakes sometimes. They get rebuked. They get bound and don't understand what happened to them, and they try to fight. Then you get into all kinds of problems for them because what happens is they'll get sick. They might die. Yeah, that, yeah, death can ensue sometimes when you get into witchcraft and you find a Christian who has power. You can wind up sick or dead from that stuff. It can go back on you and you can die because the demon, all that witchcraft you work can go back on you. Or the demons you try to send on other people can come back and they'll destroy you. Or it will turn around and somebody might wind up attacking you, shooting you, cutting you, beating you to death. Uh, there's all kind of bad things that can happen. All right. Now, after that happened, <clears throat> there was another case when the new library, the Central Library here in Greensboro, when it opened up years ago. You guys, well, you guys still, yeah, you guys still in high school, weren't you? You guys still in high school? I think you were. Yeah. yeah, I think you guys were still in high school yeah. when, the, when the library opened up. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> my daughter graduated in 2001. And you were 2004? Three. Three? Okay. And so um, I wasn't, I had planned on going because I knew everybody that the mom was going to be up in there. But the Lord told me, I, I need you to go to the library. So I went to the library. And when I got there, guess what? There was this white woman who was a witch dressed in regular clothes like my brother told people. He said, don't always look for the witches to be dressed in black. He's right, because they don't dress in black all the time. Because now the world you guys live in, more people know about folk dressed in black and they get suspicious. But if it was if this was 1975 and I was like 21 years old, some people might catch it, but a lot of people wouldn't have. I thank God that a lot more goes out now, so more people are are at least suspicious to see somebody dressed in black all the time. So she's dressed in regular clothes. Although you could say she probably was about my age or a little younger than me. She was dressed, you could kind of say hippie, hippie like. She's walking around with no shoes on, which she wasn't supposed to be doing. You know, very few, especially public buildings, will allow you to walk around in your bare feet. But this woman was, it was, it was only two floors, but she walked down, whole library down, spreading witchcraft all over the central library. So guess what I do? I start following her. And I'm walking behind her praying in tongues. One of the best ways to combat the enemy is to pray in tongues. Why? Because when you pray in tongues, you say specifically what God wants you to say. You know, God knows where your mind is. He knows that you're rebuking the enemy at, at that particular instance. But if you allow the Spirit to pray through you, you'll always pray the right prayer. And that's whether you're rebuking somebody in witchcraft or any other situation. You might go to pray about somebody that's sick, and you may want to pray in tongues, but that's fine. Because many times you may know one thing's wrong with that person, but it may be four or five other situations going on that need to be prayed about for that person or something else that the Holy Spirit may want you to pray about. So I walk behind a woman praying in tongues. So I'm on, I, th I think I picked her up on the second floor. It's kind of hard to remember exactly how it was. But as I followed her, she left the building. Why? Because she felt that rebuke. She felt that power. And she left out. Guess what? Days later, my daughter comes to me. And she tells me, Daddy, 
She said, you know how you rebuked that woman that was working witchcraft the other day in the library? I said, mm hmm She said, well, guess what? Her daughter goes to school with me at Grimsley. And her daughter came up to me and said, your dad rebuked my mama the other day in the library. So the woman knew who I was. Now, I never met the woman. I can't tell you what her name is today. Now, my daughter will be 34 years old in two months. Now, I, I, that might have been her junior or senior year in, in high school. But the girl told my daughter, your dad rebuked my mom. My mom was in there working witchcraft. And your dad knew it, and he did things to her, and she got scared and left. You hear what I'm telling you? See, this is the real world that we live in. And see, a lot of times you're, you're doing, you're living in a world that people don't even realize it exists. And I'm like, Paul, brethren, these things ought not to be so. But many Christians, they're walking around and have no clue. Now, I made a reference when I, I talked about this on Facebook. And I said, through the gift of discerning of spirits. And that means being able to spiritually ascertain or judge spirits or spiritual atmosphere. But a lot of times you can't really say when the word of knowledge is working and when the gift of discerning of spirits is working. Because you, you get a lot of different understandings from those things. At any rate, <clears throat> I wanted to give validation again to what the brother said about that the witches are operating and they're not always wearing black. And he's right. But if you don't have the gift of discerning the spirits or the word of knowledge operating in your life, you're not going to know what you're around. <clears throat> now, sometimes you can be around such demon power that folk who ain't <clears throat> saved a lick will go like, man, it feels spooky. It just feels funny. It feels weird. Sometimes the demon power is so prevalent that a person that is nowhere near Christ can tell something ain't right. And I think all of us, at, at, excuse me, <clears throat> sometime or another, that's that incense that's working on me. It's making me cough. Um, yeah, sometimes, well, don't go ahead, but sometimes it will make me cough. Um, that's one of the things that will happen is that demon power is so prevalent that people will feel it. So again, I want, I want people to understand the, the, uh, the brother was right on about that. The brother was right on about that. Now, let me tell you about another thing that happened that I did not talk about uh, <coughs> on Facebook. But my kids were in a Christian group at their high school. But I felt led by the Spirit to go to one of the meetings. I'm at Grimson High School at the meeting. And you know when you have, when you have these, these things, you know, I was in you know, I was in the chess club and I was, you know, in the pep club and stuff like that, the SGA. <coughs> and, you know, you have to have a teacher as a, you know, an advisor, teacher advisor or sponsor. And uh, the man who was over this Christian group was actually somebody who was in witchcraft. Yep, he was into witchcraft. I discerned his spirit. And so I'm sitting there while the meeting's going on and I'm sitting there binding them. I'm just praying and praying in tongues under my breath. And I'm just, I got my eyes on this man. Now this man feels that rebuke. He's watching me. So we're watching each other. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm binding him. You hear me? Binding him. You can do that in the spirit. You can bind the devil. God's giving you power to do so. And I bound him. I bound up his demonic power. And guess what? He quit before the school year was over with. He got scared because he realized somebody had some power that I knew what he was doing. Now, how fiendishly clever is that? That you're going to be in the witchcraft and you're going to be the sponsor of a Christian group. But see, again, most people who say they're Christian, man, they're just saying that, you know, in word only a lot of times. They have no power. That's one reason why people get into witchcraft. They don't respect folk who say they're Christians. They don't have respect for us. But they've met few of us who really have power. See, we got too much 
head knowledge. Head knowledge is not going to help you. You must have something else besides head knowledge. You must have a relationship. If all you have is head knowledge and all you got is ritual form and ceremony and religion, religion is not going to save you. Christ is a real person. He's a real entity. God the Father is a real person. He's a real entity. The Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. You know, because of the false teaching that we have, the Holy, most folk talk about the Holy Ghost like he's an it. And it is an impersonal pronoun. He's a him. He's a person. He is. Not it is. He is. And you have to, and I had to learn how to address him as a person. Why? Because I had that same false teaching that the Holy Spirit wasn't it. Now, this is actually a, a, a false teaching that really derives from Catholicism. Now, I'm not telling lies, I'm just telling the truth. You know, people get mad. I don't care about you getting mad. I want you to know what the truth is. The model of Western Christianity that we have stems from the Catholic version. People took all of us who aren't Catholic or Protestant. All of us who aren't Catholic or Protestant. So regardless of what denomination you come from, and you weren't Catholic, you're Protestant. But people took the Catholic model and then took it and flipped it. That's why you got uh, a lot of the same church hierarchy like uh, Episcopalians and the of ten, they got almost the same hierarchy. And some variation in some of the other uh, denominations. And sometimes, you know, one de one denomination will have uh, presiding elders, like they like they have in um, uh, Prince Baptist that my, my great granddad was a, was a pastor in. And then, uh, you know, you may have another one, they may call them, they might call them uh, superintendents or call them bishops. But a bishop Bishop is a Greek word for for supervisor. And a supervisor would be what a superintendent. Mm -hmm. You see, so a lot of times, you know, we hum up on, on terminology, but the main thing I want you to understand is I was really happy that the brother shared the experience on Facebook. And I wanted to make sure I gave validation to what he said, but also cautioned the people who were watching too, because one of the um, persons asked, said, well, you know, said, well, he, they said some of the words, well, you know, um, we're protected against witchcraft. I said, well, yeah, if you prayed up, if you consecrated. But it doesn't mean that you won't be attacked. You know, it the means- The Bible says no weapon formed against thee shall, well, prosper. shall prosper. Yeah. Didn't say they wouldn't form. Yeah, and didn't, yeah, that's right. Didn't say it won't, that's right. Didn't say you won't gonna be attacked. People still try it, but a lot of Christians don't recognize that witchcraft really exists. See, and see, if you don't know something's coming against you, you can be attacked and not know you need to fight it. Because a lot of folks think, well, man, some weird stuff is happening to me, and they won't realize a, a demonic attack. So if you don't recognize you're being attacked, how are you going to rebuke it? See, it's not automatic. See, and I, I, I made sure I made the statement that I learned from uh, World Apostle Marcerillo. Your victory is not automatic. You're going to have to fight. But it's not what? The weapons of our warfare, I might have gone to the pulling down of strongholds. And we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness, against wicked spirits in high places. It's all demonic power. But you must understand you have to resist the devil and he'll flee. Don't mean he won't try to come back because they will. Uh, during the early 1990s, God revealed to me that a lot of drug dealers were working witchcraft so they wouldn't get caught. And sure enough, I wound up uh, meeting a brother here in Greensboro. He's a little older than me, but he, he'd been a drug dealer. <clears throat> he'd gotten saved. And when I said that, he said, well, you sure know what you're talking about. He said, well, that's what I did. And he said, you know, the word got out and the cops did come to his house to bust him. But he had worked witchcraft and he said the cops opened the drawer where the drugs were and the, the devil fixed it so they couldn't even see the drugs. He said the drugs were in the drawer and when they opened up, he said they didn't even see them. That's crazy. 
Ain't that crazy? But see, I knew what God had revealed unto me. I remember, I remember saying that. That's when the Daltons were here, when, when God gave me that revelation. And uh, brother Nick, I don't know if he's still alive. I ain't seen, we ain't seen Nick in years. But he gave that he gave that testimony. But I also found it out too because uh, in, the people in my neighborhood, man, they you know they sell drugs. They, they've sold drugs on both sides of me, to the left and to my right. The house that I'm facing now, as I'm looking at this camera this way, and the house behind me. And uh, the, the word pharmakia, some people pronounce it differently, the Greek word that we get our pharmaceuticals from, our drugs, it's, it means witchcraft. And these people are working, they're going to root doctors, you can call them psychics, whoever you want to call them. <clears throat> uh, and they're getting stuff to work so the cops won't bust them. And see, I'm in conflict with them because they try to come here in my neighborhood and try to work stuff on me. That's where they make their mistake. Because I can bind what they're doing and send it back on them. And I should. You know, I met Christians that were really dumb and that were really uh, real religious. And sometimes, you know, they're just really dumb. And I'm, I'm just going to say they're really dumb. I mean, Christ talked about, he said, that the, he said the children of this world, he talked about folk who weren't saved. He said they were wiser than the, than the children that were in the kingdom. Because they, they didn't know how to operate, the way to operate. I had people be so full of religion, they would say, well, I don't want to hurt nobody. I said, but they're trying to hurt you. I said, now look, I said, let me explain something to you. I said, now, you come to me and say you want God to bless you. Now, if folk are trying to curse you, you're going to tell me, you're going to try to tell me how to pray. Now, first of all, I'm praying to God. So if I pray something that's unscriptural, it ain't going to happen. I mean, if people don't stop using common sense. If I'm praying to Yahweh, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, if I don't pray according to his will, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, you be asking amiss. That's why I'd be, I'd be asking amiss. And I'll be outside the jurisdiction of God. So if I pray for you and say in the name of Jesus, I bind every principality and power, and I command it to go back on the people that were to end the root doctor, and you're going to get religious and say, well, I don't want to hurt nobody. It ain't you. It's not you to start with. It's not me. I have no power to bind anybody. Everything I do is under God's authority. I mean, people say some really dumb stuff trying to sound religious. And they think they're being Christian and they're really being foolish. If somebody's coming against you, they have to destroy your life. They have to destroy your health, your wealth, your family. Stop thinking about that. So why would God not, if he says that he will protect his children. That word says it is better to have a millstone tied around your neck and be cast into the sea than to bother one of my little ones. Doesn't the word say that? I didn't make that up, did I? Well, guess what? God really means that. What has happened is that we've been around people who have a powerless gospel. You know, I've had people ask me to pray for them, and then they got surprised when I grabbed their hand or laid hands on them, and they felt the power of God hit them. And they would look at me real real funny after the power of God hit them. Why? Because they were used to a ritual where you just say a prayer. They weren't used to God really moving. They were used to somebody just saying a prayer. But prayer is a petition, and prayer is actually, it's actually a conversation. Because you not only pray to the Lord, but you look for the Lord to, to speak to you. And a lot of times I tell people, I say, if I pray for you, I say, I tell you what's, what's allowed to happen. I say, you lie, have a dream or a vision. You might hear a voice. You know, you know, I never, I don't know exactly how God's going to communicate with you. But one way or another, God will communicate with you. He'll make himself known. That's what I like about God. See, the, the cool part about it is, is when you stand as an oracle for God and you minister the gospel, God will always reveal himself. See, that's the cool part about it. You can trust him. 
See, you can you can trust him. So I, I tell people, my son asked me years ago, he said, well, Dad, you know, he saw all kind of miracles growing up. And he said, Dad, you know, do you really feel pressure when you pray for people? I told him, no. <laughs> I told him, no, not at all. <clears throat> I don't feel any pressure. I told him, why, do I, why should I feel any pressure? God told me to pray for the people. I can't heal them. But God told me to pray for them. So if I exercise the word of God, if I give people the word, and then do what God tells me to do, then it's incumbent, of, it's incumbent upon God to heal. As long as they come to him in faith, they come to you know, if God, God will do what he says he'll do if you believe him for it. See, the thing about it is, it just is a thing of faith. So I told him, I feel no pressure about praying for people. I don't think twice about it. I lay my hands on people right quick. Or people say, well, pray for me. Uh, <clears throat> I said, well, now you here here in front of me now. Pray, let's pray now. So I'll pray later. I said, well, we'll pray now. You're right here in front of me. Let's pray now. See, I fooled a preacher uh, uh, a few months ago. <clears throat> and I grabbed his hands and prayed with him in Golden Corral. He wasn't expecting that. He was really mocking me when he said, have you got a word for me? Yeah, I said, yeah, I got a word for you. And then I laid my hands on him and prayed with him out loud, prayed in English and prayed in tongues. I don't care. I ain't quite like Smith Wigglesworth, where he's still on the table one time. <laughs> I think in a restaurant. <clears throat> but, you know, but I'll pray. I pray with people in parking lots, in grocery stores, in department stores. It makes me no difference. So I just prayed, <laughs> prayed in tongues. Didn't care about them thinking about me being a holy roller. I don't care. I, I lost that a long time ago. Um, and God moves. All he wants is somebody to believe him. He is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And I just believe his word. You need to believe his word. <clears throat> I found that people read the word, but they don't always believe it. But you have to get them to a place to understand. You don't really believe what it says. And sometimes I have to tell people, I said, no, you don't really believe that. I said, you can tell me what it says. You can tell me where it's located. But do you really believe it? I'm, I'm asking you right now, who are watching me right now live, do you believe the word? Stop thinking about what I'm saying now. Because whatever it is in whatever area of your life that it is you need God to move, God will move for you tonight, right now, in a few minutes when I get ready to pray. But you've got to believe it. I'm going to say the same thing that the late Oral Roberts used to say. And I saw, that's, he's the first person I ever saw pray for the sick. And I was a child. I was the size of the age of my granddaughter over here that's seven years old. I probably might have been five when I first saw him do it. My mama would watch Oral Roberts every week. See, I, and I was raised Baptist, but I always believed that God healed the sick. I believe what I saw on that television. See, I believe the word. See, I questioned why things were going on when I got saved at 10 years old. I used to start Baptist Church on the corner of Wagon Church Street in Tarboro, North Carolina. I, I didn't understand why we weren't seeing folk healed in my church. I didn't understand that. I know these just said prayers, but I, I questioned God. I didn't understand. So, well, you know, why, why do I see that you did all this great stuff in the Old Testament? Then you sent Jesus and all this great stuff was done, but I ain't seen it in my church. I questioned as a child. And the interesting part about it was uh, when I first got married and I was tw 27 years old, uh, a ministry came to Tarboro. And it was down on that, that field between Emerson Avenue and uh, Bradley Avenue across my Uncle Lama's house. And that woman who did not know me from Adam, and she was a prophetess. She's about my age. She's in her 20s. And she looked at me and pointed at me and said, you were a child and you questioned why you did not see the miracle power of God being made manifest in your, in your uh, church. Oh, you, yeah, I just didn't see it period because I got news for you. The holiest people in Tarboro didn't have no power. You didn't hear nothing about nobody getting healed in Tarboro. You didn't hear it. Why? Because it didn't happen. All they done, and I ain't being funny, all they done in the Holy Temple and, uh, and at St. John's was jump and shout and dance. That's all they did. There were no miracles. There were no signs. There were no wonders. 
And when God started using me, you know, he was using me prior to that. But when I finally stopped fighting the ministry to go into it, sure enough, at 25, I was having miracles all the time. And the holiest people and the Baptist people were mad with me. I think the holiest people were more mad with me than the Baptist people were. I mean, the Baptist people were upset because they knew I was I was raised Baptist and I was doing this other stuff. But the holiest people knew that I was not holiness. And I was getting miracles and they weren't doing it. They got upset. But I just believe God. Just believe God. The word, the word is for us, for all of us. But you must believe that He is a miracle working God. Now I've seen God work money miracles. <clears throat> I have uh the pictures of, of the house. Uh Dot's dead now, but um one of the ladies that was coming here, uh her house got burned down by a grandchild with one of those um, little pots that you cook with and the child left the thing on. Yeah, her grandchild left the thing on and the house burned down, the, uh, overheated and the oil gets boiled over and caught a fire and her house burned down. And uh, she saw this house she liked in the subdivision in Graham, outside of Graham. And uh, it was a new house had never been lived in, and she said, "She said, she said, brother Jones, she said, I see this house. I love this house, but I don't want to pay the price they want for it." <clears throat> and she was she was sitting over in the corner over here from me. That was Dot's spot. I had these two recliners in the house, and that was Dot's that was Dot's spot. She go sit in that corner, and I at the time I was sitting over here to my right, I used to teach in the doorway over here. And I never asked Dot what the price was she wanted to pay. I never asked what the price was for the house. You hear me? <clears throat> I'm trying to get you to understand now. All I knew is that she said, <laughs> I don't want to pay the price that they want. I said, well, I'll tell you what, Dot. I said, then look. I said, now, you know what you want to pay for the house. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll pray with you right now. I got up and walked across the, this room, same room where we are now, into the corner over here, grabbed her hands and prayed. And I agreed with her in prayer. And I said, in so many words, I can't remember the exact prayer. Because that was back in the 90s, wasn't it? That was back in the 90s. Probably been 20 years or more that it happened. And I said, you know, I told the Lord, whatever it is, the price that Dot wants to pay for this house. Lord, let it happen in Jesus' name. And then I came back and sat back down and talked to class and had regular prayer. Doc comes in next week, grinning, happy. And so now I'm going to hear the testimony. <clears throat> she said, Brother Drone, she said, I told the realtor that I did not want to pay the price they wanted, and I gave them the quote that I wanted. She said the realtor laughed in her face and said, they're not going to take that price. That's a new house that has never been lived in. She said, well, I don't care. She said, that's the price I'm willing to pay. So reluctantly, the realtor said, okay, I'll go to the, to the builder with the price. Guess what? They took the price that Dot wanted. And the price that she asked for was $9,900 less than what the asking price was. To this day, I don't know what, well, I never asked her. I'm trying to get you to understand. I didn't ask her, but I agree with her on that one point that she knew the price she wanted to pay. And even though I did not numerically know what it was, I agree with her. And God gave it to her. And there is no distance in prayer. I don't always have to lay hands on people. In the realm of the spirit, there is no distance. Now, if I were to your house or wherever you are, I would lay hands on you. But I don't have to. I can pray for you now and it's, the power of God will move just like I'm laying hands on you. Now, somebody, if, if I'm looking right, made a mistake. I had a viewer, a viewer just left. They shouldn't have, they should have stayed. Because if they wanted a miracle, they just lost it by getting off this line. 
So I'm getting ready to pray now. And so whatever it is that you want God to do for you, I want you to get it in your mind right now. It doesn't have to be just one thing. It can be a series of things. And remember, we are in God's new year. This is the first of the new year on God's calendar. So we are starting off God's new year now. So if you got a list of stuff or a host of stuff that you want to be done for the next 12 months until we get to Ross Hashanah, Yom Kippur, you need to start with it now. So get those things in your mind now, and we're going to pray and we're going to believe God to touch whatever it is that you need. And I think God really had me talk about material needs. This must be, you must have uh, uh, who's watching me live, you must have a material need that you need God to use, because God's definitely got me uh, talking about this. Uh, maybe uh, Wednesday I'll, I'll have uh, some of the pictures, because we, we actually had a, a victory dinner in the house after after Doc got in the house. We had a celebration for that. Yeah, I'm going to have a testimony next week, too. Yeah, I'm telling you, see, so God, God's doing some things. <clears throat> Father, again, Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your, your truth and your veracity, Lord. You always said, Jesus, verily, verily, I say unto you. Jesus was always emphasizing, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you. So I repeat the words of Jesus. Truly, truly, Jesus came, suffered, and died for us to move into the kingdom, to be back and brought back in that place that we lost when the first Adam fell. God sent the second Adam, and his name is Yeshua or Jesus. And in his name right now, Lord, I bind every principality, every power, every rule of darkness, every wicked spirit in high places. Lord, we bind every plot, every scheme of the enemy. It should redound of a Sunday that people on the job, Lord, people who are in our bloodline, Ishmara, Dosunda, or Redan of a Sunday, so called friends, Ishmara, Dera, Tabasundo, Oshmara, Redan of a Sunday, Lord, those who may be lurking at our schools, Barbara, Dosumara, Dera, Tabasundo, Oshmara, Day, Lord, Oshira, Descendra, Era, Redan of a Sunday, Era, Da Sandra, or Redan of a Sunday, Oshira, Descende, Lord, Oshira, Da Sabara, Dora, Redan of a Sunday, Ishmara, Dosira, Da Sandra, or Redan of a Sunday, Ishmara, Dosra, and Father, I pray, Lord, that people, Lord, will be able to, to use, Lord, the gift of the word of knowledge. I pray you stir up in the word of knowledge, Lord, and the gift of the certain spirits, Lord. Everyone needs the gift of the certain spirits. Father, Ishira, Dada, Basande. Marcerillo, Lord, has talked about being able to discern, Lord, for maybe the last five to seven years. Christians need the gift of discerning the spirits, Lord. If no other gift will manifest in their life, Lord, I pray that they will issue a dasanda or an era basanda or shirada. Roto o shirada, the sira, the sindra, era da basande. Roto o shirada, sanda or a da basanda or shirada. Red era da basande. And Lord, if they're being attacked by someone, Lord, that they would find it hard to believe that it's that person. <clears throat> be it family or a friend or a colleague, Lord, let them continually see the individual or individuals, Lord, in dreams. Let them continue to see them until they are convinced, because I believe some of y'all have been seeing some stuff, and y'all thinking that y'all are just having bad dreams or you know, ate the wrong food, but no, many times it'll be the people that are closest to you in your inner circle who are your actual enemies. My grandmother, who I never met, Lucy Taylor, told my mama Virginia Taylor drone. She said, watch your friends because you know so-and-so and so is your enemy, so you don't deal with them. But my grandmother said, watch your friends. And my grandmother was a Baptist who fasted and prayed. So I think she knew a little something about the realm of the spirit. So Father, I pray. Roto O Shere de Sira de Sindra Eroda Basondo. Roto Asmara Dero Tirada Basondo O Shirada. Red Eroda Sando O Smirada Basande. Father, touch them, Lord, Ishirada Basande. Rosabara de Sindo, Lord, the sick, Lord, touch them from the crown of the heads to the sole of the feet. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone watching this program right now. Those within the sound of my voice. 
Lord, I pray that every member of that family, Lord, that is not saved, Lord, let them come to the foot of the cross. Father, Adasabara, the sons of Oshiri, the Sindra, Eridata, Basande, Lord, go get the back slot, Lord, bring them to the foot of the cross, Lord, bring them back to that place, Ishira, the Basondo. Ready, Eridata, the Sandra, Eridata, Sandra, Eridata, Basande. I plead the blood of Jesus over your families, Ishira, the Basande. And Father, I bind Ishira, the Basande. Those, Lord, who go to the groves and the high places, Ready, the Sandra, Oshiri, the Basande. Red arrow, the son the Osher, the Sierra, the Santa Oro, the Basande, Roda Osher, the Sender Oro, the Basande Osherada, Roda Osher, the Santa Osher, the Basande. Lord, I bind the people I saw in that dream, Lord, that looked like it may have been Osher, the Basande, that with that baby, Lord, I bind that in the name of Jesus. Roda Osher, the Basande, Osher, the Sende, Roda Osher, the Basande, Lord, I bind those, Lord, who try to go against Esther Sondo, the realm of the Spirit, Lord, by their intelligentsia. Roto Oshera, the Sindra Ero, the Sandra Ero, the Basande. Roto Oshera, the Basande. Lord, I buy enemies on the job. Roto Asandra Ero, the Sindra Ero, the Basande. Roto Oshera, the Sindra Ero, the Basande. Father, let our enemies on the job. Let them be thoroughly confused and confounded, Lord. As David said, Lord, let the ditch they have dug for me, Lord, let them fall to that pit. Eshera, the Sira, the Sindra Ero, the Sira, the Sandra Ero. Roto O Sherry, the Sender Erodan, the Sunday O Sherry, Roto O Sherry, the Sender Erodan, Samara Dora da Sande, Roto O Sherry, the Sender Ero, the Sierra da Basondo, Roto O Sherry, the Sierra da Sandra or da Basande, Red Ero da Basora da Samara there to be a Samara Dolo, Roto O Sherry, the Sender Ero da Sandra or da Basande. Lord, turn everything around, Lord. We just bind these years to Basoro or da da, Roto O Sherry, the Sender Ero da Basada. Roto O Sherry, the Abbasada, Erebus Sunday. Roto O Sherry, the Sindy Ero, the Erebus on Norma. Roto O Sherry, the Sindy Emero Basolo. Roto O Sherry, the Siri, the Sindy Erba. Roto O Sherry, the Sindy Ero, the Basolo Barodoro. Roto O Sherry, the Sindy Ero, the Basado. Roto O Sherry, the Barodoro, the Abbasande. Ready El Sabaro, the last Barra de Sabaro de Day. Roba de Sabes Barra, the rest of the year Dolo. Roto El Lada Basbara de Basbaro. Ishmael de Sabora de Sabaro, the Rabasa. Reba de Sabara de to be your last Sunday. Red the Rail, the Bosamara de to be your last bar. Roba de Sabara, don't rep it as a bar of Bassade. Best of Bear, those of Bear de Smara de Laba. Roba de to be Smara de to be your last Barra Low. Roba de Sabara de Barra de Sabara 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 de
No, let it be Osura, that was Santa or the Era, the Isabara Dora, that's Sande. Isher, the Sinta Era, the Beer, the Basunda Oshma. Rodo Osura, the Sinta Era, the Basande. Lord, let the highest power be made manifest. Asher, the Sadra, the Sabara Dodo. Rodo Osher, the Sinta Era, the Basondo. Rodo Osher, the Sinta Era, the Basondo Ora. Roba de Sabero, the Raza Basra, and the Sunday. Roba de Sabero, the Basro, the Race Mara Dede. Roba de Sabero, the Bia Rada Basondo Osher, the Roba de Sabero, the Bia Rada Basande. Roba de Sabero, the Bia Rada Basande Osher, the Roba de Sabero, the Bia Rada Basro, the Rasande. Roba de Sabero, the Baro Dora, and the Samara Dodo. Roba de Sabero, Bear to be a rather basundo, oh, sure not. Robert S. the bear to bar a door and out of a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my year clocked out right. Thank you. 